Let me just make sure that it's connected. But have a look what he's just giving me. He's just giving me four core packs. These are the R8 spec. I'm actually installing a HD reversing camera from the guys over at Toto into my newly installed stereo that I showed you. So two of the main packages that I was waiting for have come in. Check out the front end on this car now. It's crazy. Check it out. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a held it service. Um, Guys, there you have it. The car is sprayed. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode from Salvage Nation. Before we even go anywhere, I have to give a massive shout out to Bimmer Flex. You didn't have to do it, mate, but he sent out some of his merch to me. Check this out. This is so nice. Hey, Bimmer Flex. I really like it. It's actually really nice. So massive thank you to Bimmer Flex for that. In today's episode, we're back on this bad boy. Check it out. Back on the golf bar, and by the end of this episode, guys, it's gonna be painted. We need to get this car painted, but there's a lot of prep, body work. There's so much stuff we need to do, so we're gonna be cracking on with all of that, and then we're gonna be getting this car painted. There's a few grills, and a few other little bits and bobs that's coming in the post, so by the end of this episode, hopefully all of that stuff will come in, and we're gonna get this car completed. But before we get on with all of that stuff, I wanna show you the unit that I installed into the car, thanks to today's sponsors. This video is sponsored by a Toto Car Stereo, and they've got an online shop, and they do some really special units, and it gives a lot of really cool features to any car with a double DIN or a single DIN application. So check out what I've put into the Golf R, Obso Gas, check it out. So guys, take a look at the new unit that I've installed into the Golf R, and this is the Ototo S8 Gen 2 unit. Now this is the latest unit that they've got, and check this out. One of the things that I'm really excited about is it's running Android. So have a look, it's got the Android system, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got everything built into the unit, so I don't need to really connect my phone, other than for phone calls, but have a look at this. If I go to the menu, You've got all of these apps and you can download your favorite Android apps onto this. It's got Google Chrome, but what I'm really excited about is check this. You've got your YouTube app on there. It's gonna to connect to the internet. Let me just make sure that it's connected. And there you have it guys. Have a look. Normally, you need to connect to your phone. My phone is not connected. I've just got my phone sat there. It's tethered to my phone. And then I've got all my favorite YouTube kind of videos and stuff on the go. You've got driving in motion as well. So if you've got the kids, you can wipe them and let them watch their favorite YouTube shows. But come on, what's everyone's favorite YouTube channel? Salvage Nation. So I search for that. There it is. And there's my latest video right there. If I click the video, it starts to play straight away. Check that. But we're gonna come out of that because I don't want any strikes. Um, and one of the reasons why I installed this over the factory sat nav is I tend to not really like the sat nav that comes with the cars. I tend to always use my phone and that's why I've got my little phone holder on my windscreen. So guess what? This one connects to any phone with the car leak system. So if you, I don't know if you can see that, but it literally says wired Android Auto, wired CarPlay or wireless CarPlay. And have a look at that. My phone is here. It's not even plugged into any phone calls. But have a look at wireless Apple CarPlay. If you've got Android, it will give you that as well. And the last thing I want to share is for everyone who was asking why the engine light is on, have a look. Like I said, when the car starts up now, engine light is all gone. The reason why the engine light was on is because there was an O2 sensor that I needed to change and I've gone ahead and changed that O2 sensor. I had a lot of people in the comments just being curious asking why the engine light was on but I also had a lot of people in the comments saying that should be an MOT failure, the engine light shouldn't be on, blah blah blah. The engine light was not on at the time of MOT, like I said the car wasn't driving, I got the MOT done and as soon as I started driving the car around the O2 sensor probably kicked in. When you have these petrol cars and they sit for a while, this car's been sitting for months and months and months. For some reason, from my own experience, the O2 sensor always goes. For some reason, I don't know why, the heating circuits in the O2 sensors, they always, always go. So I've replaced that, and now the car has no more engine management light. There's no crazy issues with the car. I didn't cheat my MOT, so I just wanted to put that out there. So with all of that explained, I hope you've enjoyed the new unit that I've put in. And if you wanna get one for your car, they work in any car. You just need to get the patch leads to suit your make and model. But if you wanna grab one of them, I've teamed up with Toto, and they'll 
be a link down below. And if you use that link, and if you use the code down below as well, you'll get 5% off the cost of this unit. And man, trust me, it's worth every penny. And I wanted to just share that with you guys so that you can enjoy it as well. With all of that said, let's get the car into the garage and start prepping for the paint. All right, guys, I know that we're meant to be doing the paint in this episode, but before we get onto that, have a look. The garage is really busy. They're busy doing work there. And I was just speaking to Akil, and Akil just gave me a gift. Akil's the guy that always gives me gifts. Check it out. So he's over there doing a bit of work over there. But have a look what he's just given me. He's just given me four core packs. These are the R8 spec, and this should give this engine a bit more performance. And you know me, I'm always down for performance. So before we get the car in, we're going to get these swapped out and see what that feels like. So let's get the engine cover off get the old standard coil packs off and we're gonna get these uprated Audi R8 spec red coil packs on the car and see what that does for the golfer. I'm still waiting for this top grill to come in the post and then we're gonna be doing some custom work on that bad boy right there to make sure that it's straight. Get rid of that semicircle for the badge. So we're gonna be doing a badge delete there and I'm waiting for the bottom one. That's gonna come in the post quite soon, but these two at the side are looking really, really good. So I've picked the red core packs now. They seem to be running nice. The engine sounds good. I've given it a nice little cleanup, but we're gonna test those towards the end of the video. Let's get the car from here into the garage and start the paintwork process. There's a lot of bodywork left to do on this car. We're gonna be doing some customization to the bonnet, as I said. Let's go.
All right, guys. I've gone ahead and I've sanded this area down. If you remember, I don't think I showed it to you in depth, but a lot of people have been commenting, but this door had a big old dent right here. And one of the things I had to do is just sand it down to the bare metal and then use my dent puller right here. And the way this works is you just touch it on the side like that. As soon as you touch it, it kind of makes these tiny little welds right on the tip onto the metal. And that's why I had to strip it down to the bare metal for this to work. Now, one of the things is you have to pull this whole section out, but it's just not a matter of pulling it out. You have to pull it out to a point where it doesn't flex anymore and have a look. That's good. It's not flexing. And the only other spot that had any kind of big major work that needed body work was just right here. I can just put a couple of layers of body filler, sand that flat, and then we can start with getting it all ready for paint. But have a look at that. that I'm happy with that. Check it out. There we go. And if you look from that angle, there's no more dent that has gone all the way in and I've kind of pulled out the dent as much as I can right there and I can just put some filler on the top of that. Around the rest of the car, we've got tiny little dents like that but I don't need to do anything in terms of pulling that out. Um, yeah, the car, the, the, the surface of this car is quite clean and I've gone ahead and I've replaced all the other panels so they don't need any body work. It's getting a bit late tonight, we've got the new build on the channel right there as I said but you have seen that already. All right guys, the joys of editing. So you've now jumped forward to the future and whilst D, myself, is in the past sorting out this, I'm actually installing a HD reversing camera from the guys over at Toto into my newly installed stereo that I showed you. So I've just got a few last wires that I need to sort out and then we'll be doing a test and then I'll hand you back to the past to see how we get on with all of that. I've gone ahead and attached the camera there and I've run all my wires and everything has been plumbed in, everything has been wired in and it's now leading right to the back of the unit right here. Um, there's one last power wire that I need to solder in and then I just need to plug in the plug at the back and then we'll be doing a test to see how it looks and just to see if it works really. So let's get into that. <laughs> So guys, all I've just done is I've tapped into the ignition red wire to give the camera at the back of the car a bit of power. And then this is the video input for that camera and I just need to plug it to the back of the unit on the rear camera input there. Now, this has got a pink wire that runs along on the internal side of this long black wire. And it says that this pink wire, I need to connect it to the reverse light. But that's an analog way of doing it. When I bought this unit, um, I knew that I had to get an ISO to quad lock adapter and I got one that's canvas enabled. So this has got the canvas already and this has already got the reverse gear sensing output already built into this canvas unit there and I've gone ahead and I've tapped into that already so that's that wire right there I need to solder that up as well just forgot that's my internet antenna for the Wi-Fi system and everything is it literally just you just stuff it into the cavity um, and all I need to do is plug in my rear camera and let's give it a test see what happens okay so everything started up it's already connected to my phone right there as you can see if I stick it in reverse it should pick up the reverse signal from the canvas give it to the unit and turn on my rear camera oh there you go guys have a look at that result High definition, rear view camera installed, all good. And I'm gonna sort out all these wires, put the fascia on and show it to you in a minute. So just hold on one second. Guys, there we have it. Gone ahead and just like that, everything is nice and back together, looking nice. And when you put it in reverse, you've got rear view camera, stick it in park, it goes back to the regular screen. And not only does it look cool, it's quite practical. So imagine someone's tailgating you, you can literally just press the app, click the app, it opens up and that's still in park so you can drive with that as much as you want or not and you come out of that and then you're back to your everyday stuff so i'm happy with that now i've got rear view camera listen this car is coming together nicely and on that note let's go back in time and see how we're getting on with that side damage oh <laughs> hey guys you're back here oh bloody hell, i didn't know you were back that quick i hope you enjoyed that little radio that we showed you back then You've now come up to the present day and two of the main packages that I was waiting for have come in. Check out the front end on this car now. It's crazy. Check it out. Have a look at that front end now. 
My top grill came in, I've just put on my R. I was debating whether to leave the R off, but as you can see, there's no main badge right there. And then the bottom one, that's what you just saw me putting in. And that has all come in. And have a look at that. Front end of the car is looking a million bucks. Wee! Wee, wee, wee! So guys, I thought that I would have had to get a bit of metal, weld it in there or something, do a bit of bodywork. But the kit actually came with this little plastic piece and it kind of fits in just like so. And it's gonna fill that gap nice and tuck, just like that. And you know what, I quite like the ridge. I was debating with um, Akil if I should sand it down, put a bit of body filler, make it smooth, or if I should have the ridge and I quite like the ridge. So I'm gonna go get some silicone. We're gonna stick it in place from below. And once I'm finished with that, we're gonna go ahead and get some mud body filler, whatever you want to call it, slap it on that, sand it down, and then we'll be prepping for paint. Alright guys, so Akil's just put on the first layer of body filler and as you can see it's, it's minimal filler, it's literally just a little spot on the wing right there. We had another little scuff on the wing there and then the door. The bodywork all around the car, everything else is fine. The bonnet, it's just got a little bit of fading because it's been exposed to the sun and the rain or whatever the case might be. But that's the only bodywork that we need to take care of and we'll continue that. So whilst Akil continues with that, check out the wall, like, comment, share, Eagles Garage and look up there, have a look. Salvage Nation, I just love this wall. I want to show it off. That's Akil's own car and that's an E55 AMG. He's got a copy car, but we actually just bought, well, Akil did, a genuine E55 and we're going to be not rebuilding it, but let's just say there's a lot of work that is needed to it. So that's going to be coming on the channel very, very soon. We're going to be changing the color. We're going to be doing an engine rebuild. We're going to be doing so many things on that and that's another one of Akil's builds. But for now, let's continue with this bad boy.
black clip. Yeah? Yeah. Guide coat, yeah? Yeah. Huh? Say no more! Guys, like I said, it's a minimal body work. So with the help of Angus and Akil, we've gone ahead and we've blitzed out everything that we can do for tonight. It's quite late now. We went ahead and we put down some body filler and then we smoothed primer. that down. Then we went down and we put a bit of primer on top. The primer is still a little bit tacky, so we went ahead and put some guide coat. We're gonna leave that overnight. And once that dries, we'll come in in the morning, start to do the water sanding, make it nice and smooth and pretty, and then we're gonna lay down some paint. I'm gonna be taking off the front bumper, I'm gonna put on that new grill that I've got for the bottom section, and we also need to sort out that hole that's in the bonnet. Remember, I'm running a badgeless front grill on this, so we need to do some little bits to the bonnet to make that nice and smooth, and I'll be showing you all of that tomorrow. So, I'm knackered, I'm gonna head off, pack up, and I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good morning guys, so it's the next morning here. It's a cold and crispy morning here in London, but have a look. Everything is nice and dry, got no issues there. That is ready for sanding. And now it's time to head to the garage, get a nice early start, finish off everything that we need to do and get this car ready for paint. We'll be painting this car today. But whilst I make my way to the garage, check out these clips of when I did a hell debt service to this car. So once again, I'll be sending you back in time, check it out. And then by the time you get caught up, I'll be at the garage. So <laughs> I told you this video is going to be long. There's a lot of parts to it. I've been filming for over a month. So yeah, check out the clips and then you'll be up to speed. And by that time, I'll be at the garage. Alright guys, so you are watching me in the future. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do a Heldit service. Um, thanks to you guys, I'm really in tune now with my Heldit system. I've done a lot of research. One of the things that's happened on the car is as I've been driving it around, it's been sat for ages. I've been having some really rough DSG gear changes and also when I put it on the diagnostics, it's saying that there's an open circuit on the Heldex pump. So, before I go ahead and change the pump, I want to do a service and I went ahead and I bought these service parts. It comes with the oil, the filter, and I've read online to, to just give the pump a little bit of a clean. So I went ahead and I've done that. I've taken it apart. I've changed all the oil in it. I've changed all the seals. I've changed all the screws. I've given it a clean. It was really dirty. And if you come around to this side, I don't know if you can see it. And if you look right there, you should see a brand new filter that I've put in right up in the top as well. I've bled the system and given it a nice clean and hopefully that should do the trick. As you can see right there, that's the old filter. That was really dirty. That's the old oil. That was really dirty as well. And I'm going to be replacing it with that oil. Getting everything sorted. Right, you guys, as you can see, the rear wheels are spinning and the front wheels are spinning. So that means that my Heldex fix has worked and my four wheel drive is in full motion. Check that <laughs> So yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna pack up now, get everything nice and tucked away and then I can go do some tests. See if it's actually working once I'm driving. guys so as you can see I've made it down to the garage everything on the car is working fine that held that service fixed the issue that I had with the car so the car is running in tip-top form today it's all about getting the aesthetics done on the car and it's been oh such a long time coming and I'm very excited I hope you are too so as I said earlier everything's nice and dry the first step is I'm gonna be removing this front bumper we're gonna be getting all of that water sanding done and then we're gonna be getting some paint mixed up we're gonna lay down some paint oh I can't wait Put in all the grills, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. It's a bit cold. I don't know if the paint is going to dry. I don't know how it's going to go down. I can't predict the future, but we're going to try our best. So let's get this front bumper off. Stop talking. Get straight to work.
Alright guys, so as you've just seen, I went ahead and I sanded down all the bits on the car that we need to spray today. I used the 800 grit on the bonnet and the wings and that's going to make sure that it's nice, smooth and keyed, ready to take some paint. I went ahead and did the same thing with some water sand on the bumper, making sure that the bumper is nice, making sure I got into all the grooves and the crevices and the creases, which is very important, so that this paint job will last. I want to do it the proper way, the best way, the Salvage Nation way, right? Now that all of that is sorted, is what I've been waiting for. We've been rebuilding this car for months and this is what it all comes down to. We're getting ready to mix some paint and this is it. I've been waiting for it. I know that some of you guys have been waiting for it. So let's get the car painted. Make sure he put on his mask and wear mine as well. Safety first.
Guys, there you have it. The car is sprayed. I'm happy, I'm gassed. I hope you are. Let me get out of the way. The guy I killed, he done it again, man. He done it again. The car is sprayed, the Golf R is sprayed. I can't stop saying that. This has been a long time coming. Like, we got this car, you know, this has been one of the most difficult builds, but we're almost there. This is a milestone, now that the car's sprayed. Right, you've seen it all, I put it down, I'm a mess. So you're gonna have to wait. You're gonna have to wait until the next episode, which might be the final episode on this build, I don't know, but you gotta wait until the next episode. We literally can't do anything more for tonight. It's been a long day, <laughs> we got started. This video has been a month in the making. Anyway, this is where we're gonna have to end it. Stay tuned to see what happens next. We're gonna remove all the wrapping. We're gonna be putting on all those gloss black grills. The gloss black grills are gonna look really nice set up against the white background. There's so much more to come from the channel. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button. And yeah, man, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the episode, go down below. You know, you, you know the drill. Just click like, comment, let me know what you think, and I will get back to you. I'm gonna pack up. I'm knackered. So this is where we're gonna end it. So like I always, always say, keep it moving, and I'll see you in the next one. Guys, thank you for watching the video. Click here to see what YouTube thinks you should watch, or click here to check out this playlist on one of my previous builds. And I'll catch you in the next one. We out.